Hey everyone, my name's Tomato Anus, also known as Weakest Willy, and this is a segmented Silent Assassin suit only speedrun of Hitman 2. This run is performed by Loris, the current world record holder for this category, who also helped me write the script to make sure I didn't done goof it all. If you'd prefer to watch either this run without commentary or Loris's current world record, they're both linked in the description. So this game is the second installment in the World of Assassination trilogy, which also consists of Hitman 2016 and Hitman 3. Each game is considered to be a release of a new season of missions, with the first game being Season 1, the second being Season 2, and the third being Season 3. Hitman 2 is where all the Season 2 missions originate, and is a single-player stealth game where you play as Agent 47 through a series of missions where you're given a target, or targets, to take out. Each mission is an open-ended sandbox that you can freely explore with various means of assassination, some of which are a bit more flavorful than others. This video specifically covers a speedrun of all main missions from the Season 2 campaign, from Night Call to the Ark Society, and does not include the missions added later via DLC. This run requires you to get the highest rating, Silent Assassin, on each individual mission, which requires you to only kill targets slash prevent non-target kills, not get spotted, have no witnesses, not get caught on camera unless you destroy the footage, and have no bodies found unless their targets killed by accidents or poison. You have the ability to wear disguises to sneak into restricted areas and not be noticed by certain individuals, but the second part of the name for this category is suit only, meaning you aren't allowed to change what you're wearing mid-mission. You gotta stick with whatever default outfit you start the mission in. Also, real quick, we here at Tomato Anus covered the same run of Hitman 2016 around this time last year, which is available for viewing on this channel. It's not necessary at all to watch that video before watching this one though, just figured I'd give anyone unaware a heads up. Alright, with all that covered, let's get into previously on Tomato Anus. Oh hey Chicago guy, you're back already. Yeah, it turns out this jacket is a time machine. Huh, Roman times. Hey, is there a gladiator thing going on right now? Yeah. Is that what your sport music sounds like? Yeah, we always play these tunes when sports are going on. Want to hear what sport music sounds like where I'm from? Sure. Guess you weren't ready for that yet, but your great, 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 great grandkids are gonna put up with it at pep rallies. Hey, you, don't move or say anything. I need to talk about a Ridge sponsorship. Dude, what did I just say? Ridge sells products like compact wallets, key cases, phone cases, and more. Their wallets have over 50,000 five-star reviews with over 30 available colors and styles to choose from. I really like how no matter how many cards I put in my wallet, there's always room for cash. I also like how easy it is to flip to the exact key I want with the key case and how easy it is to get all the keys back in a row so they don't jangle around in my pocket. You can get up to 40% off by going to ridge.com slash anus anytime between now and December 22nd. And oh, Ridge is December, the 10th month. I know, guy. just wait, I'm almost done. You can save up to 40% from now through December 22nd by going to ridge.com slash anus and Ridge is so confident you'll love their durable wallets that they'll let you test drive it for up to 45 days or you can send it back and get a full refund. All right, I'm done now. Wow, I don't even know who that guy was, but I hate him. Real quick, one piece of tech to cover before the run because it's used right at the start is something called a fast interact. Fast interact is a thing in Hitman 2016 as well, but it's done a little differently in this game. So when you interact with things in this game, you normally have to hold down G until the interact circle fully fills up. However, if you press G to interact, and at the same time you press the button to pull up the inventory, which Loris has bound to 2, followed by pressing them both at the same time again, the interaction finishes immediately. So pretty much, Loris is pressing G and 2 at the same time twice in a row to fast interact. This saves anywhere from a few milliseconds to a second each time you do it, and Loris will be doing it a lot throughout the run, such as whenever he leaves a mission. Also, throughout the run, when Loris interacts with things, he'll often do so as early as possible. This is because the game will immediately cha-cha slide him into position, rather than him having to walk all the way to the object he's interacting with. Additionally, the slide is slightly faster when he crouches compared to when he does it standing, and also, early in the run when he slides to a computer while showing how low he can go, it causes a cutscene to start slightly earlier, which you can see in this comparison here. So our first mission, Night Call, is at a secluded seaside manor, with our target being Alma Raynard. 
Loris skips the initial cutscene once the camera pans to a specific spot, which times out a security camera's movement later in the level. Right away, he fast interacts with the painting as early as possible to slide into position and grabs the katana, tranquilizer gun, and USB stick full of intel from this secret room. He fast interacts slides to the computer to use the USB stick, which triggers a cutscene he immediately skips that repositioned him to the top of the nearby stairs. After shooting these guards with NyQuil bullets, Loris Butch Coolidge's Alma to Jackson Pollock the wall and heads outside. Sidebar, our Jackson Pollock is way better than Alma's painting we fast interacted with earlier. After doming this guard in the head with a crystal ball, he runs past the security camera's detection grid to his left, which is the camera whose cycle he timed out by delaying when he skipped the cutscene at the start of the mission. If he hadn't skipped the cutscene when he did, then he'd have to run just a little bit more to the right, which is a total inconvenience. He's now making his way to the exit of the level, and when he passes by the truck up here, his detection meter will start filling, which he'll quickly drain by crouching in waist-high grass to break line of sight. Have yeah, crouching is a bit busted in this game. He then shoots a gas tank on the back of the truck, which explodes and draws the attention of all the guards on the beach, including the three armed guards who were by our getaway boat. It's important to note that the guards who were by the truck when it exploded were far enough away so that the explosion didn't kill them, retaining the silent assassin rating. So as these guards run past towards the exploded gas, Loris crouches in the grass and then he'll interact fast to get our boat in the ass. Oh wait, that was backwards. This will wrap up the first mission and bring us to the second mission, the finish line. So our two targets in this mission are tech mogul Sierra Knox and her father, Harvey Dent. Loris skips the cutscene immediately since the timing works out best that way with when Sierra will drive by in a Formula One car. After running past this crowd on the left that's gathered to listen to a Karen rant, Loris is going to do what's called a fast retrieve to get his sniper out of his briefcase by crouching, dropping the briefcase, and then interacting with it, which lets him take the sniper out almost instantly. He uses this long-range weapon to take out this distant camera, and it's actually a Swiss Army sniper since he then uses it to pick the lock on this gate. When he runs into the building up ahead, he'll go behind the stairs to grab a propane tank that's sitting there, and then head up to the first landing of the stairs as Sierra zips by. He's then going to get his multi-tool back out and use precision aim to wallbang Sierra's car, causing her to crash and die. Accidentally, of course. Unfortunately, because he hardscoped, he can't add it to his Call of Duty montage later. Loris ignores the employees only sign here and checks to make sure the guard is facing away before waltzing past and yeeting the propane tank above Harvey Dent. He's then going to use precision aim to slow down time to shoot the tank after it hits the wall, otherwise the bullet would cause the tank to leak but not explode. After evening out Harvey's face, knocking out the guard behind him and destroying the camera with the explosion, Loris pocket sands the guard at the top of the stairs and melatonin bullets the guard through the doorway. He's going to clamber back outside here where he'll get his multi-tool out again to send the lock on a door into the stratosphere. This is the lockpicking lawyer and I recently purchased this master lock. All he has to do now is fast interact with this conveniently placed chopper to end the mission. So for Mission 3, Three-Headed Serpent, we're headed to Colombia to take out three targets, Rico Delgado, Jorge Franco, and Andrea Martinez. Loris skips the cutscene when the birds are in the middle of the screen to make the first target more consistent and runs forward and right before shooting into the distant doorway, causing the target to run out and a guard to move out of the way. After dropping back behind this wall and fast retrieving his pistol, he times out shooting a hanging planter with just after when Andrea starts running, which finally gives her time to stop and smell the roses. Martinez is down. At the top of this hill, Loris will shoot a camera so he can run past undetected, and after trampling over the local flora on the cliffside, he's going to climb a large vine to scale the wall. At the top, he'll move towards the front of the platform to have a better chance of hitting his mark, then shoot some hedges to lure Rico out into the open, shoot a wall to lure a guard, and shoot twice at another wall to distract some patrol guards before shooting Rico in the head. After sliding down this ladder, he's going to quickly shoot another security camera so he can run past undetected and escape out into the jungle to hunt down Jorge Franco. Loris hangs a left when exiting this gate here to avoid a camera, and the area Franco is in is a bit up ahead and is a huge drug manufacturing area with a ton of patrolling guards. Because of this, then when he moves through that area, Loris is going to stay crouched and in the plants to avoid detection. 
He crouched quick here to drain his detection meter, and this whole part of the run is an example of just how powerful crouching is. After passing the Scrimmage cosplayer, he's going to shoot the wall of a shack to distract a worker, and then swap to a gun called the Seeker 1, which causes its target to run to a bathroom or garbage can or something to throw up. There are two workers in this building on the right here who Loris needs to leave, and after shooting the first one with an Ipecac bullet, he hops back out the window and fast interacts with a generator to distract the other. Back outside, he continually uses instinct to check where Franco and the guards are in the area, and after keeping wide left here to go to the docks, he'll line up a shot on Franco. In this run, he noticed the guard on the right start turning his direction though, so he repositions slightly to be hidden behind a barrier before taking Franco out. All he has to do now to escape is fast interact with another conveniently placed helicopter that I'm sure no one nearby notices take off. This brings us to Mumbai for Mission 4, Chasing a Ghost, where our targets are Vanya Shah, Dawood Rangan, and a third person referred to as the Maelstrom whose identity we're supposed to determine. So if you plan to play this game at some point and don't want to be spoiled for who the Maelstrom is, close your eyes now and open when I say to open them, because determining their identity is a huge part of this mission. Right away, Loris yosses his briefcase into a crowd of people after briefly walking backwards to be sure it unsnapped from aim assisting onto someone and tossed it down to momentarily distract the maelstrom. After picking the briefcase back up, he equips the ICA remote taser and drops it in this puddle before activating it. As he shoots a guard around this corner with a Benadryl bullet, the maelstrom walks through the puddle that the taser was in, killing them instantly, while Loris runs past the other guards who are distracted by their friend who just collapsed. He then swaps to a brick he grabbed before shooting the guard as he runs to a metallurgist at his forge, which he tosses tosses the brick into as he makes a wish. The brick in the forge causes purple smoke to billow atop the slums, which causes the two remaining targets to walk towards each other. Also, open your eyes if you're avoiding spoilers. All clear. When he rounds the corner to the right up here, he's going to pick up a car battery, and then just after on the left, he'll grab three coins from a tent. As part of planning for each mission, you can choose an item to be smuggled into the map and hidden for you to grab, and for this one, he set it up to be the three coins he just grabbed. This is because up here, Loris is going to stop to play horseshoes, except instead of throwing a horseshoe, he'll throw the car battery, and instead of a pull in the ground, it's a puddle in the mud. He'll then toss one of the coins into the puddle, whose sultry siren call seduces Vanya into stopping and snatching it. That won't be for a moment though, so for now, just remember that we've set up our open invite for Vanya to come play horseshoes. Loris is now traversing back across the map as he makes his way to Dawood. When he gets to his destination, he's going to set up shop behind a specific tent in a row of tents and get his sniper out from his briefcase. Here he takes out a security camera so that it won't detect Dawood's soon-to-be corpse, and when Dawood rounds the corner, Loris will line up the horizontal line of his crosshair with a second light from the bottom on the ceiling. While he lines up this shot, Vanya comes to the conclusion that the rest of you should have already drawn. Playing horseshoes sucks. When Dawood's head is even with the short wall he's behind, Loris shoots the ceiling twice to turn some guards up there around, giving Loris his window to headshot Dawood. He then fast interacts to pay this rickshaw driver the two remaining coins to be his getaway driver, letting him exit the mission. This brings us to Mission 5, Another Life, which takes place in the fictional suburb of Whittleton Creek, Vermont. Our targets for this mission are Nolan Cassidy and my cousin Jay, who, fun fact, is playing Hector Salamanca in the upcoming Better Call Saul sequel, Breaking Bad. In addition to taking out the targets, we have to find three clues to figure out what Hector is up to. For this mission, Loris is going to let around three quarters of the cutscene play out so that all the NPCs and everything are in the perfect places, so while he does that, I'd just like to say I hope you're all doing well. If you're not, then I'd just like to remind you that no feeling is final. I cannot stress this enough, but no matter how hopeless things may seem, I assure you they are not, and whatever is going on cannot take away from you the fact that there is a tomorrow. There are brighter days ahead, and those dark feelings and thoughts do not define who you are or will be. And also, please be sure to give yourself credit for overcoming difficult periods in your life. Too many people credit the media they consume for getting them through things when it's really you who got you through things. 
Getting back to the run, when he finally skips the cutscene, Loris walks up to the sidewalk and fast retrieves his silenced high power sniper, which he uses to shoot Hector's oxygen tank twice, with the first shot causing it to leak and the second causing it to accidentally explode. He then grabs three coins that were smuggled into the level next to this bench and swaps his equipped item to the ICA micro remote explosive. After looking both ways to cross the street up here, he'll drop the remote explosive on the street side of an Aldi brand Cadillac, followed by placing one of his coins on the curb next to the vehicle. He'll then drop another coin as he moves to the nearby mailbox, which he'll conceal the third coin inside of and raise the flag on to indicate outgoing mail. You've got mail. This draws the attention of our second target, Nolan, who will go to investigate the mailbox. While Nolan goes to get the mail, Loris walks inside the house and shoots two dudes with tryptophan bullets so he can grab one of their guns and the first of three clues that are required to complete this mission, crouching in the process to slow the fill of a detection meter. He then makes his way back outside and into the neighboring backyard, using instinct along the way to watch Nolan and see him say, ooh, a piece of candy, to the multiple coins spread out on the ground. This lures Nolan next to the Aldi caddy, which Loris voids the warranty of by detonating the remote explosive. The placement of the explosive makes it so that it's the car explosion that kills Nolan and not the remote explosive, so it counts as a totally normal accident death by car explosion. After deftly picking the lock to this shed, Loris grabs the second clue of three that implicates Hector and grabbed a shovel on his way back out. Just past the birdhouses on the right here, he's going to fast interact with a prompt so quickly you can't even see it, causing him to dig up the third and final clue. It the to exit the mission, all Loris needs to do is run into the covered bridge up here and fast interact with the prompt to finish his daring escape. This brings us to the last mission, the Ark Society. Real quick story catch up, mute the video until this image of Agent 47 goes away if you'd like to avoid them. So in the previous game, we were set up by someone known as the Shadow Client and were tricked into taking out a lot of members of a group called Providence, who control most of the world's affairs. In this game, we formed an uneasy alliance with Providence to stop the Shadow Client, with our targets for the first four missions being people affiliated with them. Turns out, though, the Shadow Client is a childhood friend of 47 who also used to be an assassin, so we're teaming up with him now to take out Providence. Cousin Jay used to be a part of Providence, but retired, and we gathered the clues last mission to figure out where we can find the person who has his old role with Providence now. Our goal for the last mission is to take out two new chairwomen for a different secret organization, which, not even getting into that can of worms, while capturing my new cousin so we can interrogate him on who runs Providence. But capturing my new cousin is totally optional for this mission, so we won't be doing it since that's slow. So for this mission, our targets are Zoe and Sophia Washington, and to start the mission, Loris will end the cutscene as soon as the camera switches to Agent 47. Right away, he kneecaps four guards near Zoe like he's Robocop, which sends Zoe into lockdown. As Zoe tries to run to her safe space, Loris fast retrieves his silenced sniper, walks along the brick wall to get himself into position, and shoots Zoe when she's in front of a railing post. That way it serves as a backstop for the bullet, and the bullet doesn't hit the ground way in back, otherwise someone could notice and come investigate slash find the body. Loris is then going to embrace his inner Levi Muenberg and climb down the edge of the building here, followed by sliding down a gutter to a window below. Also, fun fact, Agent 47 is so good at sliding down the gutter since he used to spend his weekends on the pole, but hey, we stan. This will bring him to the general area where they're holding funeral services for Cousin Jay. After running down these stairs and through a series of doors to go outside, Loris is going to hug the edge of a cliff to bring himself to Cousin Jay's casket at Discount Stonehenge. There, he's going to whip out the multi-tool one last time and shoot the ceiling above Sophia, which causes a non-target NPC near her to rotate out of the way. He'll then shoot the chandelier, causing it to fall on Sophia and take her out. That must be Janus's casket. Looks like the Archeans really admired him. Good thing Lady Gaga didn't swing from that chandelier. He then uses instinct to check where the guards between here and the exit are, and after sliding down the ladder here, he'll pop one last shot to the right, drawing the attention of the guards. He can then just run to the hole in the wall and fast interact to finish the mission and the game by teleporting from a gutter to a boat. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. So if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much on behalf of both myself and Loris. The World of Assassination trilogy is wild for its sandbox nature and just lends itself so well to speedruns with all the different routes you can do. If you're interested in watching more runs of this game or seeing runs of the other seasons, then head on over to speedrun.com and use that search bar. I'd also like to take a moment and give a huge thank you to Loris for his help with making this video. It seriously would not have been possible without him and I had such a blast making it with him. 
Be sure to check out Loris's YouTube and Twitch channels for more content, Hitman or otherwise. Links are in the description. Additionally, thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without you. It was over a year ago now that the patrons of this channel submitted and voted for the Silent Assassin suit-only speedrun of Hitman 2016 to be covered, and I figured it was about time to cover Hitman 2. They've also submitted and voted on other runs to be covered, such as the Any% percent run of Subnautica and a third one that's due out next month. If submitting runs and voting for one to be featured in a future speedrun explained sounds like something you'd like to participate in, then you can by contributing as little as $1 a month. Not only will you get access to polls like this, but other polls where I pick the featured runs, access to videos early, ad-free videos, updates on videos as they're being made, and more. Supporting the channel monetarily is entirely unnecessary, but so many of you continually do so, which just blows my mind and is something I am so grateful for. So again, thank you to you patrons. And lastly, as always, be sure to check out the Tomato Anus Discord server. We have a super friendly and welcoming group there who are always eager to greet new faces and just chat about whatever. That's all for this video though. This was a Silent Assassin suit-only speedrun of Hitman 2. I've been Tomato Anus, and I hope you have an above-average day.